In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Queen of the Saints, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, all the saints and angels in heaven, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today we celebrate all saints, the church commemorates, and first and foremost, all the saints that are in heaven who don't have a particular feast day recognized liturgically on the calendar, so we honor all those holy men and women who are in heaven, obviously. We pray that it's not just limited to the saints who are canonized. We hope there are a lot more saints in heaven than, than, than just those. And we are certain that there are many saints in heaven who we won't know who they are until we get there. But obviously there have been many men and women who have lived virtuous lives, lived a life of faith, hope, and charity, and have been rewarded by God by giving them their e eternal reward of life with him in heaven for all eternity. The holy men and women that maybe we have even met some of them and lived with some, and we maybe thought that Uncle Joe was a saint. Well, you'll find out when you get to heaven because uh, he will be there with all those holy men and women who have been faithful to God in this life. And we celebrate this feast day of all saints also in one sense to, first and foremost, also it's for our benefit and not the saints in heaven as we're reminded in, in the office of readings today, the saints don't need any recognition from us in the sense that we, we can't give them any more glory or honor than God has already given them. But we celebrate them for our benefit to remind us probably, first and foremost, of our true goal in life. You know, the first question of the catechism, why did God make me? And um, what is our whole reason for being here? is summed up today in this feast day to remind us that we're all called to know, love, and serve God in this world and to be happy with him forever in the next. These men and women that we celebrate, these holy spirits, the angels in heaven too that were faithful to God in the test that they were given, all show us that this is the true goal and purpose of our lives, is to be with God, to love and serve him in this world and be happy forever in the next. And so many people today, and we too at times, can sometimes get caught up in this world and forget that this world is just a preparation for the next. And maybe that's the case that um, some many people are living now what they're preparing for for all eternity. I think of all those people sometimes who say, well, I have no use for organized religion, you know. I'm spiritual. I, I believe, you know, they're in spirituality, but I don't think I need organized religion. And, you know, they don't go to church on Sunday. They don't think they have any need for the church. They don't have any need for Our Lady or Jesus. You know, they think somehow that they are just, you know, they're a good person. Well, they'll find out that where they're going, if there's no Jesus and no Mary and no church, you've just described hell. And if you have been living like that already, you're probably, you know, having a good preparation for it. We hear in the gospel today that the, the Beatitudes, they tell us about, they describe for us the men and women who are in heaven. They have all these, these characteristics that we hear in the Beatitudes. They're poor in spirit. They were mourning, the, the, they mourned the world, the, the condition of sin. They mourned that God was not loved, that he was not served. They were meek. They were hungered and thirsted for, for righteousness, for holiness. When I think of the 
one of the quotes, you know, that St. Teresa of Avila is known for, besides that she said, I'm a daughter of the church, is she had this longing for God. She said, I want to see God. How many of us wake up in the morning and have like the first thought that comes into our head, I want to see God. I want to see God today. Well, if that's the case, that I want to see God, then that means we're, we want to soon leave this world because that's the only way we're going to get to see God is by getting out of this world. And so they hungered to be with God. They hungered for that righteousness and holiness that God is the author of all, for he is holy, 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 as we hear the angels always say before the throne of God. They were merciful. They were pure of heart. They were clean of heart. The saints are peacemakers. And the one that we sometimes, well, we many times forget, because we would like to have just all kinds of praise and and glory heaped upon us in this world, we must remember that the saints were those who were persecuted for righteousness' sake. They were persecuted because they, well, because they were faithful to God, and they were insulted, and every kind of evil was uttered against them because of their wanting to be faithful to Christ and to the church, to that which uh, Christ uh, instituted here on earth, you know, the, the church on earth is already this academy, preparation, this school for training us how to become saints. And uh, thanks be to God we have been given that grace today to be members of the church already, the, the saints here on earth, that uh, we hope that we will be preparing to become saints in heaven. Um, we want to strive for holiness. That's the most important thing that we do every day, that we should strive to, to achieve our goal, the highest goal that we have in this world, and that's to get to heaven. So we celebrate this feast day today, the solemnity of all saints, to remind us of our goal, of our purpose in life, and that also we should that we need to invoke the saints. Another thing that came out in the Office of Readings today is that we will only get to heaven with the help of the saints. You know, we need their assistance. We need them to intercede for us. And maybe one of the things that we could also call to mind is how much we neglect our patron saints. You know, we all, at baptism, if, if our parents had a good Catholic sense and named us after saints, either gave us a first name of a saint or gave us a, a middle name after a saint that when we were baptized, this patron saint took an interest in us and takes an interest in us and is very much concerned about um, that we give glory and honor to their name by living a good life. You know, they want us to they don't want someone to go to hell with their name, you know. They want them to be a good example. They want them to be someone who uh, is worthy of their, their name because these men and women in heaven uh, have given honor and glory to God and they want those who are, in one sense, placed under their care to do the same. And so we shouldn't neglect our patron saints. We should celebrate their feast day we should invoke them every day, asking their assistance, asking them to help us to get to heaven. And every Epiphany S Sunday, you know, we draw patron saints for the year. Those are other patrons that we have. We should also, today in a special way, uh, ask them to intercede for us, to watch over us, to show us the things that we need to do so that we can join them in heaven and be with them. And the, one of the things also, you know, parishes have patron saints. Uh, many parishes, though, don't seem to give much attention to the patron saints that their parish is named after. And they should celebrate them in a special way on their feast day and not just use their feast day as a, as a opportunity to have a church bazaar 
as most of these uh, church um, feast days end up being just an opportunity to have a, a big beer party, you might say. I don't know if that gives the saint much of an honor. They should celebrate them first and foremost liturgically and that they should honor them and ask them for that saint is of that particular area, that parish truly is one that should be invoked and should be uh, honored in a special way. And uh, if we bless them, of course, they will bless us. And so our personal patron saint that we received at baptism, again, a confirmation if they're a different saint than we had at baptism, our parish patron saint, uh, the saint that you were of the parish where you were baptized also has a very important significance in our lives. They all have meaning for God chose that saint under his patronage that you entered into his mystical body, the church. So we should be more attentive to these uh, heavenly associates, these heavenly patrons who are looking out for us and are interceding for us. And we should truly make use of their assistance that we have friends in high places who can assist us and we should ask them and, and, inter, and, and make use of that connection that we have. Today especially we want to acknowledge that all these saints in heaven are there because they had devotion to Our Lady. That devotion to Our Lady is a sign of predestination that you're headed in the right direction, that you're going to heaven if you have true devotion to Our Lady. That's the thing that sets them apart. The saints in heaven truly loved Our Lady. She, they knew that she would assist them. And so we too want to acknowledge in a special way the queen of all the saints today and to ask her to help us be with her and all the rest of her children who have succeeded and have passed the test of holiness in this life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.